In the Game of Thrones books, lots of characters have secret identities. Like Sansa pretends to be Elaine, Varys pretends to be Rugen, Maynard Plum is actually Bloodraven, who's also the Three-Eyed Crow, Robert Strong is the Mountain, Griff is Joncon, young Griff is Aegon Targaryen, who might actually be a Blackfire. The list goes on and on, and one of the coolest of these secret identities is Alaras. Alaras is a student at the Citadel in Old Town, which is like the Westerosi University. He's involved with Sam Tarly, Marwan the Mage, and Jack and Hagar, who seek secrets in the Citadel. Alaras is a minor character, but he's got a secret of his own, because he is actually a she. She's Sorella Sand, a bastard daughter of Oberyn Martell. The most obvious evidence that Alaras is Sorella is that the name Alaras is Sorella backwards. But also, we know that Sorella's father is Oberyn Martell of Dawn, and Sorella's mother is a traitor from the Summer Isles. Alaras is the same. His mother is a traitor from the Summer Isles, and his father is a Dornishman. Alaras even looks like Oberyn. They both have black eyes and black hair with a widow's peak. At one point, Alaras says, I am no lord's son, which is true, because she's actually a lord's daughter. Alaras is always smiling, as if he knows some secret jape, and the evidence shows that his secret is that she is actually Sorella Sand. So, who is Sorella? In the show, Oberyn Martell has three daughters, but in the books he has eight, called the Sand Snakes. Sorella is the fourthborn, now 19 years old. In book four, the three eldest Sand Snakes, Obara, Nymeria, and Tyene, want to start a war with the Lannisters to avenge the deaths of Oberyn and Aunt Elia. To prevent this war, their uncle Doran arrests the snakes. Obara, Nim, Tyene, and the young ones are captured, but Doran doesn't arrest Sorella, because Sorella isn't in Dawn, she's in Old Town as Alaras. Doran says unless she returns to Dawn, there's naught I can do about Sorella. Leave her to her game. So, it doesn't sound like Sorella is working with Doran or with the other Sand Snakes. What is her game? What's she doing in Old Town? Sorella loves learning. On a visit to some ruins, Sorella turned over rocks, brushed sand off mosaics, and wanted to know everything there was to know about the people who had lived there. So maybe Sorella came to the Citadel University because she wants to learn stuff. Her father Oberon did the same thing. But the Citadel doesn't accept women, which must be why Sorella disguises herself as a guy, Alaras. And Alaras does well at the Citadel, earning three links of his maester's chain in one year, meaning she masters three subjects really fast. And she seems to care about the values of the Citadel, telling Lazy Leo that he shames the Citadel by being one of them. Also, Nymeria mentions that Sorella loves the city of Old Town. So Sorella is smart, she wants to learn, and she loves the Citadel and Old Town, and that's probably why she's there. But Sorella slash Alaras slash Sorellaras gets involved in much more than just study. At the start of book four, Alaras practices archery with his Golden Heart bow, which connects to his Summer Islander heritage. He talks with his student friends about the rumours of the Dragon Queen, Daenerys, in the East, and this guy Leo reveals that there's a glass candle burning in the chambers of Marwan the Mage. A glass candle is a candle of obsidian, and for centuries these candles have been impossible to light, but now they burn again, which shows that magic and dragons have returned to the world. Old powers waken, Leo says, shadows stir. And Alaras is really interested in this talk of magic and dragons, so by the end of the book he becomes an ally of the guy with the candle, Marwan. Marwan is a rebel professor. He travels to strange distant places, studies with strange people like Kyburn and Miri Mazdur, and he writes books about prophecy. He's an expert on magic, but most maesters don't trust magic, so they discredit Marwan. Marwan claims there's a conspiracy by the maesters to suppress magic and dragons. Watch this video for more. So Marwan's a little crazy maybe, but he totally knows things about magic and prophecy partly because he has this glass candle. Because glass candles let you see across distances and enter dreams. Marwan uses his to watch and learn. He sees Sam arrive at the Citadel, so Marwan gets Alaras to bring Sam to him. And Sam tells them about his experiences at the Wall with White Walkers and Melisandre, and how Maester Amon thinks Daenerys is Azor High, 
the hero prophesied to save the world. So Marwyn leaves and heads east to meet Daenerys. This leaves Sam at the Citadel with Alaras, and with a guy called Pate, who is actually the faceless assassin Jack and Hagar in disguise. Jacken is there possibly to steal a book called The Death of Dragons, go watch the Jacken video. But also, Sam has an old horn, which is probably the Horn of Winter which can destroy the wall. Also, also, there are Ironborn raiding around Old Town, and Euron Greyjoy's making an eldritch mass blood sacrifice nearby, so there's a lot of intense magic shit converging on Old Town, and Alaras seems connected. Alaras's friends call him the Sphinx, because a Sphinx has the face of a human, body of a lion, and wings of a hawk. It's made up of different parts, just like Alaras is both Dornish and Summer Islander. But the Sphinx might also refer to Alaras's secret identity. There are statues of Sphinxes at the Citadel, one male and one female, which might hint at Sir Alaras's male and female identities. But the Sphinx symbol goes even deeper. Because on the way to Old Town, Maester Amon tells Sam that the Sphinx is the Riddle, not the Riddler. Sam wonders if Alaras the Sphinx is the Sphinx Amon meant. Maybe the idea is that Alaras is not a Riddler who'll tell you a riddle, Alaras is the Riddle, as in his secret identity as Sorella is the Riddle. But why would Amon talk about the secret identity of some minor character he's never met? Amon mentions the Sphinx along with talk of dreams, glass candles, eggs, and the three heads of the dragon, which seems to be the idea that three dragon riders will ride Danny's three dragons. Alaras also mentions the three heads of the dragon, and he is involved with glass candles, so maybe Alaras is connected to this Targaryen dragon stuff. In Book 5, Tyrion finds a Valyrian Sphinx, a dragon queen with the head of a woman and body of a dragon. She seems to be missing her king, a male half-human half-dragon. If the female dragon sphinx is Daenerys, the male could be Jon Snow. He's part dragon because he's half Targaryen, and he's probably the rightful king of Westeros, and he could be Danny's future husband, and he could be one of the three heads who rides a dragon. Jon might be the sphinx Aemon meant, and this could link back to Alaras, if Alaras and Sam uncovered Jon's true parentage of the Citadel like Sam and Gilly do in the show. So, the Riddle of the Sphinx is still vague and confusing, but it seems to connect Jon and Danny and the Targaryen dragons with Sir Alaras. What does this mean for her future? It looks like Alaras will be Sam's study buddy at the Citadel. They might learn important secrets about White Walkers or Azor Ahai or Jon's parentage. But with Jack and Hagar around, they might also get caught up in his plot to steal that dragon book. Marwyn and Alaras seem to want to support Daenerys, but Alaras could also become Danny's enemy, because in Book 5, Danny rejects a marriage alliance with Dawn, and one of Danny's dragons kills Sorella's cousin, Quentin. So maybe Sorellaras will use her archery skills to slay a dragon. Jacken's book, The Death of Dragons, might help. At the same time, Euron brings sorcery and destruction on Old Town. Will Sorella fight to protect the city she loves? So, like a sphinx, Sorellaras is made of different parts. She's a sand snake, daughter of Oberyn Martell of Dawn, but she's also a summer islander with a golden heart bow. She's a student of the Citadel with a love for Old Town and ties to Marwyn, and she also seems connected to the Targaryens, Jon and Danny. This complex combination of conflicting loves and loyalties define the sphinx as one of the most interesting minor characters in the series. Thank you to the artists who kindly made illustrations for this video. Check out Draftergy and Mandy Fink, among others linked below. Thanks for watching, and thanks to the patrons, including Horia Bogdan, Maximilian Shute, Jan, Samantha Morris, and Poop King. Cheers.